Welcome to the program. Let's begin with breaking news that we're getting out of Gaza, where Israeli tanks are firing at Kamal Adwan Hospital in northern Gaza. This uh, is a medical facility, one of the few remaining medical facilities in this part of Gaza. It has already been under Israeli siege now for nearly three weeks. According to Kamal Adwan's hospital director, he says that the intensive care unit has sustained severe damage. And hours before the attack, he warned the hospital would turn into a mass grave that at least one person was dying every hour because of Israel's siege. Let's go to Hani Mahmoud. He joins us now live from Deir Abala in central Gaza. So, Hani, uh, this uh, is a developing story. This is happening as we speak. Uh, what more are you hearing about what is going on at Kamal Adwan Hospital? Yes, we keep monitoring the evolving story in northern Gaza, particularly at the Kamal Adwan Hospital. Just a while ago, I happened to look at a photo that was taken from inside the hospital to the entrance of Kamal Adwan Health Facility in what seemed to be a, a car that was set on fire by the ongoing heavy machine guns. But as soon as we uh, spoke with our uh, team members and eyewitnesses as well at the area who described that the tanks have in fact started shelling the facility and already some of the departments in the hospital again we look at a very small uh, a, a mid-sized hospital with the small departments and uh, any any kind of shelling or attacks uh, quite becoming quite visible but we're talking about major departments including the intensive care units sustain a great deal of damage because of the ongoing artillery shelling and the tank shelling of its defense of the hospital and also the facility itself the main building uh, of the hospital including the entrance that right now with the fire that be, with the car that been set on fire makes it very difficult for people to go in and out let alone the movement of ambulance vehicle from uh, outside or inside uh, the hospital. There's still people inside uh, Kamal Adwan Hospital, the patients, the injuries, the evacuees, the medical staff who could not go anywhere uh, uh, across Jabali refugee camp as it, it, it gradually became very difficult and quite risky as there is no safe place for people uh, to move uh, around. It's interesting to, say, to see this happening at a time the fuel trucks were supposed to reach Kamal Adwan Hospital to supply the power generators with the fuel in order to sustain the hospital's operation. But with what's going on right now, with this evolving events, it's hard to imagine that the hospital is going to sustain any of its operation as it's become uh, it, it, it's coming under direct uh, attacks by the Israeli military and the tanks that are surrounding the area. And just to give you an idea of a better context of, of what's going on here, people who actually had to go through the checkpoints and moved it from the area around the vicinity of Kamal Adwan Hospital all the way to the Indonesian hospital, describe what they were able to count as close to 150 tanks in the area. That's the size of military vehicle, the number of military vehicle and the presence of military uh, 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 presence of the Israeli military in the area. Uh, Hani, uh, we've seen a real uptick in attacks on schools, on hospitals in recent weeks, particularly in the north. Uh, I understand the, uh, it's not the first time Kamal Adwan itself has been attacked by Israeli forces. Al Alda Hospital in Jabalia has also been attacked. Uh, it's one of the few hospitals that is remaining, that is functional. We know also people are sheltering there. It must be an incredibly worrying situation for people uh, who rely on this hospital. Well, with the other health facilities out of the scene now, they pushed out of service because of the ongoing attacks. And the fact we've seen one hospital, that's the Indonesian hospital, where the power generator, the one that supplied the entire facility with electricity, was destroyed by the Israeli military. And interestingly, the Israeli military also destroyed all the solar panel on the rooftop of the uh, health facility, the Indonesian hospital, leaving it without any source of power. It's so over forced everyone in the hospital, including uh, the, the babies in the incubation, 
and the the, the, uh, the critical cases inside the ICU as well as everybody else inside the hospital to evacuate and they were all transferred to Kamal Adwan Hospital. Also the other health facility, a smaller size health facility, that's al -Auda Hospital, was, uh, came also under heavy uh, uh, fire and, and attacks by the Israeli military as well as its vicinity, including all the evacuation centers and everybody was forced into further internal displacement at the at the area around Kamal Adwan Hospital. So right now we're talking about a health facility that is a mid-size, but is it's accommodating a double or triple the number that is able to uh, to accommodate beyond capacity. And it's already running at a very, very low uh, capacity in terms of medical supplies, in terms of the insufficient medical staff, the lack of the fuel, uh, everything is becoming limited to the point, as the uh, director of the hospital described earlier today, the hospital is, is turning into more of a graveyard as they have patients and injuries dying by the hour due to the lack of, of necessary medical supplies as well as the, uh, the inability to perform necessary uh, surgeries inside the hospital. Uh, everything is becoming uh, quite uh, out of out of control right now in the hospital, and right now the ongoing shooting and the uh, the, uh, the the shelling of the facility just push it into further a uh, more challenging situation. It looks more of a, a, a final knockout punch for this health facilities in the northern part of the strip. Okay, many thanks for that. Hani Mahmoud there for us. Sindira al-Bala in central Gaza will be following uh, the fate of Kamal Adwan Hospital in the coming hours.